a lot of you guys are interested in seeing more videos on patterns. So in this one, we're going to see component composition in React. So for this example, we have this input component. So if I come here, we have an icon here on the left, which is inlined with the input, no matter where you click on the label or rather on the visible input. So including the icon, you can focus it and maybe you can have some buttons on the right, whatever. But let's say you need to create a component for this because right now we're doing it only for the search functionality but we want to include it for many other things we want to have this inline button we want to have the input like this we want to have this label to focus it automatically for us well we're not going to be copying and pasting this everywhere so for that what would most people do well they would create a component like input with icon so props is equal to then react.component props without a ref for the label because it is the root of everything. And then you would have the label here. So SR only label, which would be a string. Then you would have the icon. And actually here you would separate this. So you would have a label props and you would have an input props. And then you would say const input with icons. You get the props. And then here you would pretty much copy this. So the class name for the label. And then from the props, you would get the class name. So label class name. And you would do the same for the input. Then you would use CN for this. And then here you would have the SR only span. You would have the icon here and then the input here. And the input would take in this class name. And you would wrap this in a utility. So we deduce the classes and whatnot. And that's all. You now have your wrapper for this component. So you can come here. I'm going to comment this. You can say input with icon. And this is plural, it should be singular. And then by doing this, if you come here, you have your label with the input and everything is looking very nice. Now, what's the problem of doing this? Well, you have zero composition. If you want to maybe add a star, so it indicates that it is required somewhere or you want to change the position of the icon, maybe put it to the right instead of the left, or you want to add an actual label, not an SR only label because it's for a form and who knows what else you need to add in the future. Well, you're out of luck. You need to come here to this component. You need to then create custom properties which would most likely be filled with booleans. And then you'd have a hundred conditionals within this component. But the funny thing is half of those booleans will only be consumed by one component. So at that point, it doesn't make sense to have that logic here when ultimately there's only one consumer for that particular implementation. So now you're mixing things that shouldn't be mixed. So how can you fix this? Well, for this, you should use component composition. You should never do this. This, in my opinion, is a code smell and something that needs to be refactored as soon as possible. So let's use component composition. So for this, you would, and I'll do this in another component, since this one is going to be completely agnostic. So we can call this input with icon. And then here you would create the wrapper, so the label. So this could be the root of the component. So root, and then here you can say react dot forward ref, and then HTML label element, and then component props with ref, and we import react, and then we can ignore this rule. Then we can copy this right here, and then we can import everything so if you're wondering, input variance is just class variance authority. So we can compose components using these classes that pertain to the input, which is what we want. We want everything to look like our input from our own design system. So we reuse these classes. 
and then you would pass in the class name. And again, ignore this, we can remove this line. Then we can come here and just create the input. So const input, and then we do the same. We forward the ref. We use the same classes. We use cn, so everything is as composable as possible. And then you would say export const. And there are two things you can do here. So the first one is just export each one. So you can say root and input and the display name. That way you can come here and say import everything as input with icon from components UI and then input with icon. And then you can come here and say input with icon. And this wouldn't be the root, but rather the label and then label, and then you can compose it however you want. You can abstract this if you want or create a component for this, whatever you want. In my case, since it's just a single class name, I don't see any benefit of creating a wrapper, but you can do whatever you want. Then as for the icon, you can compose it again, and then the input. And let me get rid of this and of these props. And that's pretty much it. That's everything. So as we can see, we can compose it however we want. We abstracted away the mundane part, which is creating the classes for the label, maybe some other properties that we need to set for default, and same with the input, but then you can compose it however you want. So you can align the icon to be on the right instead of here on the left. You can pass in whatever class name you want here, and then whatever class name you want here. So this way, you isolate the properties because you know that these properties pertain to the input and these properties pertain to the label. So separation of concerns. Now I have another example. This is mostly presentational. This doesn't have any runtime logic except for a few components. But here I have an application that I made some months back. So the idea is you can have that as a lender and then that's as a borrower, so these two. Well, these two share the same visuals, so they use the same cards, they use the same sizes, paddings, margins, everything. There are subtle differences, but I still need to share the logic between the two. So instead of creating a component that, that applies for these two, which would be incredibly confusing because as you can see, this logic right here itself is already different from this logic. I leveraged component composition. So for example, here I have an is archived, I have the type, so I can switch between the two. I have has paid full amount, which is a Boolean. And if I come here to this one, we have the same properties. Then I have the header, the title, the members avatars, I pass in an array. So here I didn't fully leverage composition. As you can see, I pass in an iterable instead of using a map within the children. But the reason I did that is because there are only two consumers and this is not meant to be agnostic and the two should be identical. Anyway, then I have the badge container, the amount badge, if it's recurring, which is another badge, if it's archived, and then the description, the footer, and basically the same for this one. There are subtle differences. Some things apply to one, some things apply to the other. So for that, as you can see, I created all of the components. So I have the header here, the title here, the avatar container, then a member avatar, then the batch container, the description, the footer, then the lender avatar, then the members avatar, so as you can see, everything is composed and you can plug in whatever you want. You can override the classes. You can do whatever you want with them. And then here I export this. I simply say object.assign that card root and then I pass in all of the properties. And by doing that, all I need to do is come here, say import that card and then I just need to use dot notation and they get access to every single component. And this is what I would recommend. I prefer doing this rather than having to come here to the import and then saying import everything as that card. 
I prefer the simplicity of simply assigning the components to the main root component. Anyway, this wraps up the video. I hope you learned a lot. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.